Hey, what's up? I'm Michael, and today I have an art supply update for you. Today, uh, I'm going to do a few things a little bit different than I have been. I'm going to show a few things that I have already had and explain what I've done differently. So let me jump into that. First things first, uh, you might remember I had the ramen noodle boxes with toilet paper rolls in them. And uh, last night, I said, hey, I'm going to replace that with something different. And I done this. Now, let me zoom out so you can see this a little bit better. Uh, what I've done now, this is my... Uh, this is my colored pencils on this side, my watercolor pencils on this side, uh, just different stuff in here, brushes, things like that, my um, water-soluble graphite. Uh, so this is just a, a work box, basically, now. And I use this with my pieces. I took a, I don't know if you can see this here, it's just a little binder clip, and I stuck it on the box itself so I can push and pull this box with that. I have it setting up under my easel when I'm not using it now. I did set my easel up beside of me. So that's working out for me pretty well actually. Um, this seems to be a little bit lower than it was the other day. My camera. But, um, but anyway, this is what I have done. Um, I have foam board in here that I got from the dollar store. Uh, and what I done was I measured out lengthwise, widthwise, and depthwise. And what I done was I cut the depth, or I marked the depth all the way across as many times as I would need to. Uh, and then I went out with the piece as far as the length would need to be. So I was able to cut that fairly easily. Uh, if you're going to cut it, use a T-square and it will make your life a lot easier or uh, some sort of speed square or something. But um, my speed square was harder to use than the T-square. So the T-square worked for me a lot better doing this. Um, but I have more stuff to put in here, and I will get to that soon. For now, we're actually going to just set this down over here. Okay. So, another thing, I had all of my, my pencil kit and stuff like that. Anything that I might just come over here and sit down and do, uh, I had in boxes like that, but with the toilet paper rolls. So, you might say hey you know what that looks like it used to and it does um when i moved away this thing got all kind of messed up and i went back and i have fixed all of this now and this is how it was intended to be uh so yeah i've got it back how i want it um over here i also have i put my scissors in here i've got some pins uh some dry erase markers and mechanical pencils I might need to just grab. I also have a cool little guitar uh, bottle cap opener. I actually used it today. And then I got some duct tape here. And these set over here with my battery sharpener, my Derwent sharpener, which is okay. It's not the best. Um, then I have this here, and I can just take my spray bottle out and grab my tape, and then I sharpen in this. And so that is that. Now, something else that I have done, um, I started off doing a little color swatch, and I said, okay, well, this is cool. And then I've done this, and somebody asked me to show uh, different pencils. I have graphite versus onyx versus uh, something else. Um, 
I don't remember what the other was. Uh, but then this is the onyx and graphite together. And then this is charcoal. And they asked me to do a little swatch of that and show it to them. And uh, so that's what that is. And then after I'd done this, but before I'd done this, I went through with my watercolor pencils. And I have to update this. Uh, but don't worry about these right now. But all of from here to here, this is the Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle. And or Aquarella, however you you say it uh this is my swatches for that and i just i put the number at the bottom and i denote it that this is the art grip aquarella uh there with my white and then i come over here with this one and i said okay uh this is the gold faber aqua this is the new series and i picked up a bunch of those yesterday so uh I also, I have some more to say about this. I am going to continue working on this color chart and have this out for myself. But, for now, um, I'm going to stick that back there and go on and show the stuff I got and explain. So, just to try it with my watercolor to add a few highlights if I wanted to. I bought uh, just some Simply Acrylic from Walmart, just white. It has a three star uh, rating, which I think means it is semi light fast. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's what that means. But just a little tube of acrylic paint that was a a dollar ninety eight, I think. And then we have the art bag. Now this is not from just one store, so. First things first, I think I have taken the prices off of most of them, the tags. Uh, I bought some sponges to use in my watercolors to help get some cloud effects. So that is that. I'm going to go on and throw this stuff out here so you can just sort of see it all and then I'll tell what everything is. And I believe that's everything in my bag. Uh, so again, this is sponges to use with watercolor, and uh, it says that there are six sponges in this, but I don't think there are. I guess there are. I see them now. Uh, but I'm going to just take these, and I'm going to put them in a, a little tray or something, and I forgot to grab something to show you, but... uh. You might notice that my, my brushes are no longer over here. And I'll explain that in a moment. Ooh. I don't like that already. I don't like the way it feels. We can use them. I might have to wear some sort of glove or something when I do this. I cannot stand a porous texture on my fingers. Styrofoam about kills me. The sponge here I don't like. Uh, I can deal with it. Now, this one, however, does not bother me a bit. So, there we go. Watercolor sponges. It says, I don't know if you can see this, two fine pour silk sponges, two synthetic hydrophilic sponges, two large coarse sea sponges. Let's see if we can figure out what they are. Coarse sea sponges, hydrophilic sponges, I would think, and silk spore sponges, maybe. Uh, or these might be reversed. I don't know which one is which, to be honest with you. But uh, there we go. In the trash that goes. And over to the side, this goes. Oh, God. It feels like styrofoam. Ugh. It's going to squeak on me. I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Um, I picked up some Dollar Rowney 
white ink, acrylic ink. Um, this also has the three star rating. I've got to look that up and see exactly what that means. I think that's in the the mid range of uh, white fastness. I got this to make um, uh, highlights and sort of like a little bit of a whitewash over an area if I need it to. So that is what this is all about. Um, and it's just a try. I could not find any gouache, just a tube of gouache by itself. I like going to a store and getting stuff instead of ordering it. Um, so for all of you art companies out there, put your products in stores where people can find them. You are a lot of people are like me, and you are literally shooting yourself in the wallet by not having your products in an actual store that somebody can easily get to. Sure, you can put it in Jerry's Artorama, but that's over two hours from me. Or well, it's not two hours, it's about an hour and a half from me. Ain't nobody wants to drive an hour and a half just to buy a little tube of paint. So put them in your local Michaels, Hobby Lobbies, uh, AC Moore's, any art store, arts and crafts store. Talk to them. Put your your supplies in there. Uh, now, of course, this is self-explanatory. This is the rest of the Gold Faber set. Um, and just to look at it, this is, I believe, Light Magenta or Dark Flesh. I'm not sure. I think this is Dark Flesh right here. So 130, 123, 119. We got both. Um, well, oh no, you know what? I picked up two of the 130. I'll have to go and buy another one. I have to buy the watercolor one. <laughs> uh, you do that every now and then. You get to not paying attention. Um, But then this is, I think it was May Green, um, Cobalt something that is number 156, uh, Thalo Green I believe is 161, uh, we have another yellow here, and then I have 173 already in the uh, watercolor pencil from the Art Grip series, but I did not have the uh, the 173 in the color pencil one, so I'll have to go through and take go get another one of those, the 130s. Uh, so that's just the the new series that I got, the new ones. This finishes off my set of colors that Gold Faber offers. Now, like I said, I have several that are from, I have a bunch that are from the Art Grip series instead. So this is just to sort of fill out all of those colors that I can get at this point in time. Uh, now, if you're ordering online, don't bother with these at all. Go to Jerry's Artorama online. That is the cheapest place I have found. Uh, Dick Blick has them as well, but Jerry's Artorama is cheaper overall by a few cents on each pencil on basically just certain ones. Look up Polychromos and Albert Durer about Faber Castell if you want to get the sets like this. Uh, I picked these up because they're convenient. They're open stock in Hobby Lobby. And that's why I picked these up. They'll do for what I want to do right now. And that's all I really could ask for. Um, but if you're serious about getting pencils, you can pick them up for 20 cents more than these pencils are. And they are the light fastest pencils you can get, basically, from Faber-Castell. They're the top of the line from Faber-Castell. Uh, so it's honestly it's not that much more expensive 
to buy the top of the line rather than the middle like these. However, I will say um, the Gold Faber say on their packaging, their uh, stand, that they are extremely light fast. So I'm excited to use them and figure out and see how light fast they are and get more information about them. So Faber Castell, if you're watching, please send me information on exactly how light fast the Gold Faber set is. Uh, since I now have the whole thing. So, I'll get to this in a minute. This I got from Michaels. Um, it is an Artist Loft 1 fourth inch Deerfoot. And if you look at it, it looks like a deer hoof. And you might say, okay, well, that's, this is a stippling brush. And it's to basically, it's to take it, you you load it, um, you don't really scrub it, but you sort of load it like this, and then you, you stipple like this. You can make awesome looking trees and stuff like that. This, however, I am probably, I'm probably going to buy myself a set of these, uh, another brand, and have them shipped to me. But this one is probably going to be used to help me create clouds in my watercolor. Uh, I wanted something that was sort of short so that I could scrub with a little bit. And that seemed to be the best thing to my eye that would do that. And what I want to do is I want to get my wash up there. I want to take and just take a, a brush, a dry brush, and go over certain areas. Let me do this and get rid of some of the the bristles that are going to fall out. Uh, by the way, if you ever pick up a new brush, always, to me, the best thing to do is to go through and pick at it like that just a little bit to start with. Um, the reason for that is that it will get rid of some of them bristles that will come out in your paintings. So, I'm going to see how this will do to lift out clouds, at least the the highlights of the clouds, and then I can go back in and throw over my darker paints on it. So, that is what I got that for, and I'm very excited to use that. Now, this actually goes along with this. Uh, this little watercolor pad here, it, it was $2.00. Okay, what I'm going to do, let's, let's see here, uh, so we can fit four, the way I do it, one, two, three, four, five, six, basically 24 swatches on one of these pages, the way that I have swatched them out here. Uh, now, you might say, hey, well, that's just a number, and yeah, it's just a number, but my pencils don't have names on them. They just have numbers. So I can look at this, and I can say, hey, okay, I want 187. It matches the color I want, and I can find 187. I can divide these up by color groups, like yellows, oranges, reds, um, I put all of my purples and pinkish purples and stuff like that together, and then we got the blues and browns. Uh, now, this would be in yellow or brown, one of the two. Uh, I'm not sure which one. I think they're in brown. But uh, you can see it's like, okay, well, that's the color that I want. You don't have to be able to know the name to know it's the color that you want to match it to a picture that you're looking at. Uh, what what I have done though, painstakingly went through several different sets. Just so you know, uh, Faber Castell's Polychromos, their Albert Durer, they do not have all of the colors that you can get in their lines. Uh, Art Grip actually has a few colors that they do not have. I think it was two or three colors in that series that 
the Polly's and Alberts do not have. And I can't say the name of that right, the Albert Dewar, however it is. I'm just going to call them the, the high-end uh, AD watercolors. <laughs> but uh, I can look at this and tell. But what I've done is I went through and I put the number and I put the name beside of it on a spreadsheet. And uh, I'm going to make a, another spreadsheet that has all of them. And I'm going to make that one public. So now this is going to be a longer video. I'm sorry for that, but I do have a few more things to show you. But um, this is going to, like I said, I'm just going to swatch out some stuff, and I'm going to, I'm going to take them out of this book, and I'm probably going to put them, honestly, in a miniature uh, scrapbooking book. But let me show you one more thing before I am done. Forgot to grab them earlier, so okay. This is just it's just the box I picked up at Walmart. If you go to Walmart and you go over to the craft section, every now and then they'll have boxes like this that are on sale or that are about four dollars. You go over to the fishing section, they'll have the exact same box, the exact same configuration at the time for about 15, not, well, 10 to 15 usually. Um, I have picked, I got this one for four, and I believe I got this one for two or three on sale. Um, but this box I have taken and put in different supplies in it that I don't use all the time or that I might need to get to. I had some of these in my drawer here like the the pastel sticks, the white compressed charcoal, the compressed charcoal that's under that. These are extra charcoal pencils, extra graphite, small graphites that I can put in my pencil extenders. This is um, a compressed This is a compressed charcoal stick. I think somebody just had a wreck outside. And then this is a vine charcoal. And I can get to those if I need to. And these are not things that I'm going to use all the time. So I don't need to have them where I can access them immediately right that second. Like I used to have them in my drawer. And what I have done is I have split my erasers into a drawer. My sharpeners into a drawer and my blending stumps and blenders into a drawer instead of having any pencils or charcoal type stuff in there. So now this is definitely between this and the other thing I showed you earlier that's not all my pencils. Uh, under my easel I have another few sets and they are my main um, pencils in those little sets I have down there. However this is my uh, brush box now, and I just want to show this to you because I have done this a little bit differently. I've put my color wheel on here. These are my brushes I intend to use for acrylics. Now, I can actually use these for watercolors as well, these blue-handled ones. The rest of them in here I want to use for acrylics. Um, I have craft brushes in here, a, one set that I have, I have a hake or a, a hake, I don't know exactly how it's said, um, it's a watercolor brush, and I've heard that these are really good, and this is actually a, a Chinese um, ink watercolor brush, and um, I just got it at, at Hobby Lobby for about two bucks a while back, I've not used it yet though. Um, I do have a, a taller one, which is in, it's over here with my um, pencils, and it's actually one of the um, 
the Master's Touch by Hobby Lobby. And it's actually the same type of brush, but I use this one to smooth out graphite. Uh, now, one of, I don't remember who, somebody gave me some makeup brushes uh, to try to blend some stuff with. So I'm actually going to use these as well to try to pull out some clouds every now and then. And under this, I just have more um, of the craft brushes. Now in here, let's pull this out. I'm going to redo this somewhat, um, just so you know. Uh, I have my palette knives, which I'm going to be putting somewhere else. Uh, if you don't have a palette knife, it is not um, a hard thing to to do to to make your own. Uh, you can actually, if you can get the edge off of one of these, I tried it with the edge on it, and it doesn't do too well. But uh, I didn't have a palette knife otherwise while I was uh, not living here, and I ended up. I just went to the restaurant. This is one from Wendy's, and I just I got a knife from there and. I used it as a palette knife for a while. Uh, these are camel hair brushes uh, from Hobby Lobby. These are actually for my odorless mineral spirits. I bought them specifically for that. So I know my yellow handles, they're, I believe they're camel hair, and they are specifically for my odorless mineral spirits if I do a color pencil piece like that and I want to. So that is what they are there for. Um, my better palette knife that bent trying to pull it out of the package. Uh, I still like it though. Now this, I used this the other day on a painting and I just went through and wet down the entire paper and that was something that I, I had a great time doing. Uh, not the whole paper, but the sky of the the piece I was working on. I just grabbed this and I went across the whole thing, and it worked well. Just with water, though. Um, I did not put paint on it. I would not put watercolor on this to the. I I don't think I would have. Uh, and it's just a house painting brush, but I just grabbed water and I I put it across my paper and it worked very well. Um, now. Let me go ahead and show you this, and we will be done. This is a long video. I'm sorry about that, but sometimes you got to do things a little differently. So, uh, now I don't know that I should have my fan brushes in here, to be honest with you. I don't know that that's a good idea. I might want to take them and put them elsewhere, but these are all of my watercolor brushes. Uh, brushes you can use for watercolor. My favorites are uh, the Princeton Neptune. This is the uh, quill brush. This oval wash, I love. This is a flat wash. I love it. Uh, this one's okay. I don't like, excuse me, I do not like these. Um, these are royal fine sable royal ling nickel fine sable brushes i don't like them uh, i don't know that they are meant for watercolors but i use them with my watercolor stuff and i don't like them a whole lot to be honest with you uh, now my favorite brush in here i love these premier amethyst and i think that they're a ac moore brand i absolutely love these they are excellent um, another one, these are Master's Touch, these silvers uh, and the, the black here. Um, now this one is, that's a Premier as well. This is a Premier Amethyst as well. And like I said, I really, really love the Amethyst, amethyst brushes. They are my favorites. Uh, these Master's Touch are pretty good as well. They're not bad at all, uh, to, from what I have seen. Now, 
Besides that, though, I have a few of these that are simply Simmons watercolor brushes. And from what I have seen with them as well, like the mop here um, and this one, I'm not sure what these call, are called. I think they're called riggers, but I'm not sure. But I really like uh, the Simply Simmons, the feel of them um, and everything. I think that they are nice brushes as well. And I think, um, I don't know if they are only sold at AC Moore. But I know I found them online, but I could not find the Premier Amethyst online anywhere. Um, so I just put them in here to get them separated. Now these two here are actually acrylic brushes, or they are they can be used for either. But uh, I will use those with my little acrylic things that I've been working on. So some of these brushes can be used with acrylic or watercolor. But what I'm intending to do is basically have this, eventually, I want to get a new roll that's a little bit taller, and I'm going to set it up so that I can have um, just watercolor in it, and in another roll maybe have just uh, just stuff for acrylic. And I'm not ever planning to go into oil painting because I don't like the fact how, uh, that some of it is toxic. So uh, now let me say this: um, once you use a brush for acrylic, I don't think I would use it again after that for watercolor. If you've used it for watercolor before that, you can go into acrylic with it. Um, try to keep your brushes separated though. Uh, if you don't know which ones you have used for acrylics. The reason I say that is I've noticed that trying to use a brush I had used for acrylics, it did not act the same as it did uh, before after I used it. So, um, But hey, I'm new to painting, really new to painting. So yeah, but, uh, I'm really excited about this. Now, you'll notice I did not put anything in these two, and I don't have anything here yet. Uh, there's a reason for that. I want the ends to be to where I can just roll directly over and roll them up like so. And now, all I have to do is pull that out, stuff that under there, and... Now, I have one more little bit of advice uh, before I go. For a long time, I had these in a thing like I have those colored pencils in, to where they were standing up and exposed. Now, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but when I went to look at them today, uh, I went and touched a few of the tips and dust on everywhere so you got to sort of be like okay I need to look at this a different way I don't want dust in my paintings um, I noticed something very weird the other day and this is why I thought about this to start with and I wanted to check I picked up um, a paintbrush to do a watercolor I dipped it in the water and when I dip them in the water the first time, I mash them down just to make sure that the bristles are okay. So it sort of softens up the bristles. Uh, it makes them to where they work better to me. So I done that, and it turned my water gray. And I'm like, what in the world? So I get to looking and I didn't know exactly what was going on the reason the water was great until today when I picked these up and I I done them against my hand like this a little bit and dust went everywhere so it was actually dust in the brushes um, I, I always clean my brushes before I start and that's a good thing I guess that I've done that so from now on these are going to be staying in a box uh, I am planning to get another box and probably take these out and put them in the box and separate by 
uh, acrylic and by watercolor brushes um, what is going to be used for what so uh, yeah I think we have done it I think we've done it I believe we have gotten to the end of the video so I hope you've enjoyed I am going to color swatch some of my watercolors I'm going to cut this down uh, to a different size and I'm going to get something to, I guess, sort of glue those on to and then put them in one of them little books because I really like that uh, watercolor swatch that I've already made. Um, so I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll figure it out. I am Michael, and I will see you next time, guys.